Now I believe I can be all I dream The connection to destiny is me Hey everybody, it's Ty Inspire and welcome back to the channel and to another episode of Heart to Heart. I am so excited to introduce my guest to you for today. <laughs> Her name is Naya and she has taken that step to move to Ghana a few years ago and we're going to hear her story today. So welcome to the channel. Naya. Thank you, madam. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you people for watching on YouTube. Hey. <laughs> yes, we're so happy to have you. How are you today? I am wonderful. <laughs> I, I am in a good spirit. My energy is up and the sun is shining. So I have nothing to complain about. Things are good. Just a beautiful day here in Accra. Yes. So we are enjoying at this beautiful, um, with this beautiful atmosphere, nice cool breeze. We're having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> so now why don't you tell us, first of all, um, how you came to Accra? Oh, wow. That's a loaded question. <laughs> However, I, I would try to make it brief, but detailed. Um, I was working um, at a federal government um, hospital facility and the doctor who trained me in the emergency room, he was a Ghanaian and he would train me and then we were finished and he would always come and say, hey, do you want some tea? Do you want some dinner? So we were, we became very, very, very good friends and he's Ghanaian and he was, he said, one day I'm going to take you to my home. I said, where's your home? He said, Ghana. I said, I'm not going to Ghana. I said, I'm going to Jamaica. So I went to Jamaica years, years, years. And then finally, I decided to take him up on his offer. Mm -hmm. And in, we were supposed to come in 2019, but unfortunately, we both experienced some hardships. So we had to delay. Um, and we came October 2020. Okay. And, you know, he gave me the rundown, told me about Ghana and everything. And I was pretty excited because there was a lot of hype around it, especially the year of return. Right. Um, right. He's building a hospital in Kumasi, and he's, he's doing a lot in Ghana. Oh, wow. Um, he was in the US for 19 years, came back and now he's, you know, he wants to give back. So he said, when you get here, you're not going to want to leave. Ah. So I was supposed to be here for two weeks. I stayed for three months. Wow. E. And <laughs> during my first stay, I met my now fiance. So I was here for three months. I went to the US for a month. I was here for two months and then I moved here. So it was just five month time period from the time that I visited to the time that I decided that I want to move here. And, you know, it's, it's been amazing and I don't regret any of it. And I just love it. You have to, in order to live in Ghana, you have to love Ghana. Mm. And yeah, I love it. That's, that's so powerful. That statement is in order to live here, you have to love it. Cause yeah, I mean, we know about everything that goes on here. And it's not easy, but it's definitely doable. And if your heart is there, yes. the love is there. Yes. You know, then you make it happen. Absolutely, yeah. you have to. Yeah, you have to, especially for Black Americans and just you know some people from the diaspora in general. Um, there was a lot of things. You know, we're frustrated and we want a new fresh start. So right. coming to Ghana for a lot of people is the fresh start. Yeah, absolutely. So, do you, would you say that it's a good um, place for African Americans to come and start over and you know just to get a change of pace? Or absolutely, yeah. absolutely one because you're you're not just like I'm not just a black woman I'm a woman here so there's a lot of you know issues that we were dealing with in America that we don't deal with here yes, but right. then there's also a lot of opportunities excuse me to say but this is a third world country mm -hmm. so we come with knowledge and we come with exposure so it allows us different opportunities and different um, experiences to profit and to benefit right. and I believe that we can all contribute to Ghana and the progression together because we have so much more knowledge and experience and exposure. So the benefit of coming is one, you're coming and you can literally, you can literally set up shop. If you have a niche or you have a passion, you can be successful in Ghana. You just need the capital, but, <laughs> but you, yeah. can, you can be successful. And I feel like since I've come, I've, I've made a lot of progress and I'm continuing to make progress every single day. So yes, I think anybody who's thinking of relocating off the continent, off the country, wherever, mm -hmm. check out Ghana. There's a lot of, there's a lot of information on social media. There's a lot of buzz around Ghana now. Oh, yeah. So, you know, there's not, you know, 
you shouldn't worry that there's not information because information is out there. That's but right. anybody who's thinking, definitely entertain it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that's really good advice. All of those things, the points you made are, they're spot on, spot on for sure. <laughs> what do you feel about the culture? You know, of course, our culture is very different, even though, yes, we are, some of us identify as African-Americans, some people don't. Um, I know I do, I always have, but I might be African-American, but I'm still very different from Africans. So how do you find the culture here in Ghana? It's interesting you say that because when I first arrived, I recognized that Ghana's love language mm -hmm. and their culture is music and food. Mm -hmm. So music here is the, the heartbeat yes, and food. Yep. So, you know, you we're in the U.S. We eat food to survive. Right. But I have a totally different take on food now that I live here. Mm -hmm. One, because they eat with their hands. So it's a different type of experience. It's more intimate and you actually yes. take your time and you eat your food but it's more of a fellowship yeah, so yeah, you'll absolutely. see people who eat out of the same bowl mm -hmm. and it really is an experience they look forward to it it's exciting for them mm -hmm. but the food is so flavorful and spicy, mm -hmm. <laughs> and spicy. don't forget the spice food Charlie <laughs> but it's the food here it brings everyone together yeah. and you cannot go over someone's house without them offering you food and it's kind of rude to turn it down so just eat it anyway <laughs> um, but food here is it's amazing and I think for me, the cut, the food, the music, but then just the, the village, you know, when I first came here, I live in uh, Spintex. Um, I was going to get like a hammer from a lady and she told me it was, I don't know, 50 CDs. I was like, oh, madame, I don't have the rest. I, she said, oh no, come back. She said, I, I see you, you live on the street, just come back. So here it's a bit more relaxed and people, if they know you, they'll be more inclined to dash you or to give you things knowing that you'll come back and pay for it so I like that aspect you can never do that in the US like no you leave the Bring store without up. paying they will lock you up here is an understanding because you ain't coming back you know no, no. you ain't coming back not at all <laughs> so I think I love that aspect about the culture I love the fact that they stick together so if somebody is you know if somebody was trying to steal your cell phone mm -hmm. you would say thief thief and everybody would beat them up mm -hmm. and then they would take them to the police station so they look out for you mm -hmm. in that way as well but Ghana it's it's, it's a vibe I don't know quite how to explain it, but it's a vibe in the culture and the way they do things. Mm -hmm. You know, being black, um, a black American, we don't really have anything specific that is unique to our culture. You know, we might have soul food or we might have New soul Orleans food. where we have, you know, the different things that Hip -hop. we do. Yeah, but there's, here they don't use their left hand. They, they have different tribes that they identify with. They have so different rich. language. So here it feels good to belong. And although Though my DNA is not Ghanaian, I'm more Nigerian, I feel like being here, they welcomed me and they don't even judge. So now that you've been in Ghana, how long have you been in Ghana? I've been here for two and a half years. Two and a half years. <laughs> yes. Time flies. It, it's fast and slow, hey, at the it same does. time. I love <laughs> it, this is true. It's a duality of things. Yeah. It's interesting. Right. Yeah, it is. So what are you doing um, here in Ghana? So just talk about a few of the things that you're doing because, I mean, I happen to know some of those things already <laughs> and she's got some really neat stuff going on. So tell us a little bit about it okay so um, let me give you a backstory so when I was a little girl I struggled with you know different emotions and feelings and you know um, so the parks the you know the playground swings and things of that nature it was my safe haven so when I came to Ghana and I realized that there are no free public parks it broke my heart because I know for me that was you know that was my livelihood as a child but more importantly the children in the villages and even in the city they don't really have any place to play play yeah. there's a basketball courts here and there but it's rare there's no you know there's no place where they can be children mm -hmm. so once I seen this I identified a need and I said I have to do this oh, yeah so um, it's my goal through my NGO that I'm starting to um, build free parks and then also build bathrooms and boreholes 
So in the villages, these children, these hundreds of children who go to these schools, they have to pee in like, what do you call it? In like a hole in the ground. And not only does it smell terrible, but there's they can't wash their hands. So I'm like, this makes no sense. So for me, I said, I, I have to do this. I have to do boreholes and bathrooms and playgrounds. And for me, that would satisfy me. So my NGO is just getting up and running, but it is a goal to work with, uh, you know, we have some big politicians, we have some big people who could donate and fund these projects, and we can do these um, boreholes, bathrooms, and playgrounds in their name. So that's one thing that I've been working on. I'm working on a team of people and office space and all that other great stuff. So that's keeping me busy. Um, and when I came to Ghana, mm -hmm. I was actually retired. Okay. God made a way, and you know, I'm very young, but I'm able to retire from the federal government. And so I was chilling. When I got here, I was chilling. I was at the beach. I was partying. I'm in no Sioux. I'm living my best life. And um, I'm in a group full of women. You guys should definitely join a group of some sort. But um, last year, actually, last year, two days ago, um, somebody put a flyer out. And it was an audition for, like, acting and voiceovers and all this type of stuff. So I went. And uh, I auditioned for one of the biggest producers in Ghana, Shirley from Pungmenta. And I auditioned, and her mouth was open. She's like, what productions have you worked on? I said, I don't have any acting experience. She's like, are you serious? I said, yes. She said, I'm looking forward to working with you. So that audition placed me not on an extra role, but in a supporting role on the number one TV series on DSTV, which is their cable channel. And my role initially was just like three or four episodes, but I was able to film over 35 episodes. So now I'm an actress. <laughs> and it's kind of interesting because, you know, before I was just an obroni, a foreigner, who, you know, who was here, but people will stop me. I'm eating. I'm at the dog store. I'm at a party. People will stop me and be like, are you Esma? I'm like, yes. They're like, oh, we love this show. And I'm like, oh, this is crazy. Yeah. So since then, I was able to do a movie and then two commercials, one for the Black Star, the World Cup, and then I'm filming a movie at the end of the month. So the acting thing not only picked up, but it gave me a new a new breath. It yes. feels good. I meet so many, so many people, veterans who actually went to university for theater, um, and it's just fun, and I love it, and I think it's something that I want to stick with. Ideally, because I'm Nigerian, I'd like to go into Nollywood. We'll see how <laughs> God opens that door, but yeah, so I'm, I can add acting to my... Um, to my repertoire. Wow, so, guys. Wow. I, um, That's amazing, isn't it? Yes. yes I love yes. these stories because sometimes, you know, we have so many talents and we have things that we can do or maybe even things that are in us that we don't even think about. And all of a sudden, we're faced with this opportunity and we're able to take that opportunity, jump on it, and it becomes something that we weren't even planning on doing. So that is amazing. And to me, that is the true definition of coming to a new country and starting over and getting that, like you said, that breath of fresh air and doing some something positive mm -hmm. and also something that's going to be long standing, you know, for your life and uh, and helping and and being in the homes of other people too. Absolutely, so. absolutely. And I'm being mindful now. You know, I recognize that um, in Nigeria and in Ghana, the movie industry is big. So a lot of people watch TV shows and. And they look forward to it. So any role that I take moving forward, I have to be mindful of the message because I don't want to just be out here just, you know, acting for acting, but I want to make sure that people can attach my name and my characters with a message or something that they can take away. Yes, yeah, and even if it's not positive, it's a lesson because these, the last few roles, I've been a villain, but it's okay because it teaches you something. Yeah. <laughs> that's true, that's true. So yeah, if you don't know, you know, God blesses you with many many gifts mm -hmm. so it's not up to you to just stay in one lane that's right you would you would you would actually be disappointing him if you didn't tap into all of them so think about those things before you decide to move here or to move anywhere else think about what thing sparks your drive yes. or what makes you you know oh, this, this makes me feel good because when you get here you can try it out again I have zero acting experience and people are in my Instagram DMs like producers and I'm like wow 
this is this is crazy. Yeah. But oh, new life. the thing about life is it continues without your permission, yeah. and there's no blueprint. Mm. So, so it would behoove you to just go and go with the flow. <laughs> and if it feels good, continue with it until it doesn't. That's right. Amazing. You preached the whole sermon, girl. <laughs> I, I have nothing to say. I'm like, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that sparks my interest and, and really just just wakens me is travel mm. and geography and learning about the world yes. and different cultures and people and I simply love it and I know that you are also a traveler and yes. which is the reason why I asked you to be here on this show because we love to talk about travel. Yes. So tell us about some of the places that you've been. Oh gosh, on the continent of Africa or a part? Just period. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me backstory. <laughs> let me always have a backstory. <laughs> um, so I was, I started traveling when I was 11. <laughs> so the first trip that I took was to Jamaica. And then when I was 12, we went to Aruba and I've been to Aruba several times after that, but yeah. I got the, the bug for traveling because my parents, they always, you know, they always told us, you know, you have to explore for, so for people who stay in the same town for generations that drive me crazy because I'm like there's so much I, so I know it yeah. drives me crazy I mean <laughs> you know it's one thing when people can't yes. do it but there's another thing when you have people that just don't want to yes. I don't get that it, I mean, it makes no sense but again it, everything's not for everybody it's true but I got the bug and <laughs> you know actually early on because of this I knew that I wouldn't be living in um, the US <laughs> you know when I was older or at some point in my life so okay. once I started doing it it just became it became an adventure mm -hmm. so for example I've been so on the continent of Africa I've been to Egypt I've been to Namibia I've been to Botswana I've been to Johannesburg Cape Town and Zambia mm -hmm. um, off of the continent I've been to like Mexico Canada um, UK France Italy Cuba Netherlands China Turkey uh, Dominican Republic Barbados I've been to every island um, <laughs> I've been to so many traveler. places. I can't really explain, um, but I know that it's, it's it's definitely a large list, and because of it, that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I'm risk adverse, so I take more risks than the average person. Mm -hmm. But in my travels, I would study, and I, you know, I come from a psychology background, so I would look at the sociology and the culture, mm -hmm. and I say, could I live here? So I look yeah. at the money, I look at the culture, I look at the people, I look at the you know the job the markets and when I got to I, when I got here uh, after like 30 countries I said this is it mm. this is it wow yeah wow. Wow. but travel is something else because you know this is home right I uh, you know eventually I'll be working with my citizenship and I will be having children mm. so my next family is to explore every country on the continent of Africa wow. so Rwanda is actually close it's not a far plane ride. So I wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. And then Kenya and Tanzania. And then we finish the rest. Yes. But my children, since they're going to be Ghanaian, mm -hmm. they have to know that this yeah. is their backyard. Absolutely. Like everybody wants to go to the U.S., but I want them to know and I want them to be aware yeah. that Africa as a whole is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So don't think that you have to venture to the Western world right. to be successful or to think that there's different. Because at, uh, Cape Town is modernized and you would never yeah. think that it's in Africa and much like parts of Accra and parts of Nigeria so there's even though it's a third world country um, there's still other areas that you can explore and you can see you know modern things that's true Very so true. I'm super excited just because I live here I'm not stopping uh, yes. for those who don't know um, if you are Ghanaian you can go to Jamaica and you don't need a visa and now there are direct flights from Ghana to Jamaica wow they're a little pricey yeah, I've heard about that they're a little pricey but if Ghanaians felt like they wanted to go, you know, yes, close to the U.S. or to explore that area. You have the opportunity now. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's and that's a great opportunity to have. Totally, yes. take advantage of it. Those that can, absolutely. Um, what do you love about travel? Hmm. I think I love being um, just. 
I like the fact that people don't know you mm-hmm. and you can just be a speck <laughs> in the sea. So my mom, she lived in Shanghai, China. She was um, a teacher at one of the biggest universities. And when we went there, you know, I knew, I've heard of big cities, mm-hmm. but Shanghai yeah. is one of the <laughs> most well. pop. It's so busy yeah. and the population is so grand that literally I almost lost my niece. When we, <laughs> literally, I almost lost her. We were out and we were just literally outside and where this particular area was, it's thousands of thousands of people. So we went to turn around and we couldn't see her. Wow. And it was scary. That's so, yeah. Because, you so know, we didn't have a cell phone. That my mom did, but we didn't. I was like, wow. But I just love the fact that you can just be you and you can just blend in and people don't really bother you. Mm-hmm. But I love, I'm a foodie. Mm-hmm. So today I, I've worn these, these nice people that I, <laughs> I'm going to order a lot of food and I'm going to eat it all. So, so for me, travel means food, travel means, you know, ad- adaptation mm-hmm. to the norms. When in Rome, do as Romans. Yep. Um, when I went to, I, and I forgot to mention UAE, when I was in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, I'm not Muslim, but I respect them and I covered myself. I went to the mosque. It was actually the most peaceful experience I've ever had. And I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not Muslim, but I just appreciate yeah. the, the arts. I appreciate the history. I appreciate everything that comes with um, the differences yeah. and and the people. So it's it's not one Learning single the cultures. thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it is, and just just living and not sh- having to stress. Once you get on vacation, it's a different situation. <laughs> you know, I'm not on vacation anymore. You got us. Right. So, so it's real. <laughs> but for the so most real. part, I just love it, and I don't think it's ever going to stop with me. And I want my children and my future husband to understand. Well, Naya, thank you so much for coming to see me today. And I know that my viewers will love you and love your story. You guys have got to continue to follow her and connect with her. Please let us know where we can connect with you. Absolutely. So I wasn't much of a social media person, but um, I just got on Instagram and you can follow me at Sincerely Naya, or you can just type in Naya Pratt, P-R-A-T-T, and you can kind of see some of the roles that I've had and then I post stories so you can kind of see some day to day my life is pretty exciting so if you want to see you know the gutter of the gutter of Accra follow me (laughs) (laughs) all right and look out for her movies television shows all that good stuff follow her so you can kind of get the insight on those too thank you thank you thank you 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 guys don't forget to subscribe as always make sure you hit the button bell so that you can be the first to get notifications when I post and we'll see you next time oh wait 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 before we go oh my god all right so we're going to do 15 questions before oh. we go so we definitely have to we got to find out some more stuff about Naya here. okay hey, all right <laughs> I'm here for it okay okay so 15 questions we're gonna ask her 15 questions that are basically yes or no questions okay and she's gonna answer them answer them as quickly as possible all right y'all ready let's go let's go solo travel yes or no yes <laughs> early riser or late sleeper oh no no, no. late <laughs> don't don't bother me <laughs> unless i gotta be to work don't bother me <laughs> sunshine or moonlight oh sunshine hey, hey, that's my girl hey, yes hey. yes we love the sunshine night out or netflix and chill Ooh. <laughs> Depends on the mood, but let's do Netflix and chill. Okay, all right. Coffee or tea? Oh, I would say tea. Tea. Speed up or slow down? Oh, slow down. (laughs) I beg. Yes, yes. Breakfast, yes or no? Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Determination or motivation? Determination. <sighs> Love that. Eat out or cook at home? Oh, eat out. I don't. I'm not domestic. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> beach or mountains? Oh, beach. Uh-huh. Call or text? Oh no, text me, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can see why we're, we're going to be good friends. Yeah, like, I don't have time. Like, just, <laughs> just text me. I'll get back to you. Yes. Afro beats or hip hop? Oh, Afro beats. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> History or math? History. Absolutely. Plans or no plans? Hmm. No plans. No plans. That's right. Just take it you gotta, day. Gotta Despite, make it exciting. Spontaneity. Hey? That's right. A little bit. Never let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game. Wow. What do you feel about that? 
I, I mentioned earlier, I'm risk adverse. I will take more risk than the average person. So my mother always told me nothing beats a failure but a try. Mm. So you do it. If you're successful and you like it, enjoy it. If it doesn't feel good or it hurts, stop. Mm-hmm. So by all means. That's right. Take the risk. That was that was my, my little theme um, one year and I just went with it. Mm-hmm. Like, take the risk. And let me, let me say this. <laughs> you make calculated risk. You don't That's take right. reckless risk. <laughs> but provided you do the research and it's calculated and makes sense, take the risk. Do it. Yeah. So that's your last word for today. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> okay. Now I believe I can be all I dream. The connection.